in cross contour drawing, normally what happens is you uh, you would invent the stripes yourself. So you'd find an object and follow its three dimensional form with lines across the form. Uh, in this case, we're going to draw an actual striped sheet. In other words, you're going to be able to see those stripes in front of you. And think of this as a kind of training so that when you do go to create some cross contour lines on something else, you're already going to have a sense of how that works and how those lines curve across forms. So I'm starting with three really simple geometric forms, um, and basically a box, a sphere, and a cylinder. Uh, we did draw some challenging stuff in the past couple weeks, but uh, we haven't really tackled fabric, so that's going to be new. And fabric is quite challenging. It might take you approximately an hour to complete the pencil drawing portion of this. And uh, so, you know, give yourself enough time and try to think of fabric as a kind of architectural form. And even if you see uh, subtle curves and things, just think of them as straight lines for now. And you can always add a subtle curve later. So it's easier to find the angle of each one of those lines if you just kind of break it down into the simplest forms you can find. Take the time to really get this right. It's going to be critical for the stripes to be able to fit correctly. Uh, if something is not proportioned right, it's going to look even more off when the stripes get applied across the fabric. Once I've completed my pencil drawing, I'm now ready to add the stripes. If you don't feel super confident in your drawing skills yet, then maybe you can start out with all the stripes and pencil and then go over them with pen later. It's up to you. I decided to go in with pen right away because it saved time and I didn't necessarily need to do it twice. So here I want to show you what happened. So I, I made a mistake and I made that line too thick. And once that happened, I had to make some decisions on how to disguise it. So oftentimes when, when you're working with something permanent like this, it might just seem like a complete disaster, but really there are usually ways to disguise a mistake like this. So the decision I made was to um, darken some of the lines around that stripe to kind of blend it in so that it doesn't look so out of place. Um, so you'll have to strategize if you do make a mistake with the pen. Most of the time, the best thing to do is just leave it alone and move on. If you mess with it, you might actually make it more noticeable. So I'm going to skip over some of the other areas that I drew. Uh, you don't have to watch me draw every single stripe. But I did want to show you a couple other things. So here I'm adjusting the drawing with the pencil. I noticed that my original pencil drawing wasn't quite in the right place. So this is something that might happen as you go along. You might notice something that needs to change based on how the stripes fit the form. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is um, how to change the thickness of those lines. So here I'm making a couple of stripes that actually change in thickness throughout. So with the brush pen, it's easy enough to press a little lighter or a little harder and so I'm trying to reproduce what I'm actually seeing. So I would think of these stripes as fitting into different sections of your drawing. And one of the things you're going to have to do is count them. So in some areas, for example, on top of the box of butter, I can see that only three lines uh, reached that back edge of the box. So things like that are going to be important, noticing exactly how many lines fit in a certain section of the fabric. So once I'm done with the pen, I'm going to erase all of the pencil, and that will get rid of all of my contours, and it'll leave just across contours or stripes. 